Yamaha's motto for the SR400 is everything old is new again, and nothing speaks more to that than a kickstarter and tube tires. Reintroduced to the American market after a long absence, the SR400 still shows the remnants of the old British bike style it was originally meant to emulate in the 1970s. For 2016, the SR400 is a meld of old and new bringing fuel injection and electronic ignition into the retro styling that's essentially unchanged since 1978. Easily customized into a cafe racer, bobber, or street tracker, the SR400 is a blank canvas for you to make it yours. Excellent as a commuter or an entry-level bike, the SR400 is worth a look. I don't consider the seat height low at 31 inches, but the bike is narrow so unless you're really height challenged, you'll still be able to find the ground. Compact and weighing in less than 400 pounds, you won't have a wrestling match on your hands trying to get it off the stand. It's been a very long time since I had to kickstart a bike, but this isn't nearly as daunting a task as it was in yesteryear. No, the kickstarter isn't an option, it's the only way to start the SR400. Charming. Maybe. I haven't decided yet if I think that's awesome or a deal breaker. Unless you ride off-road bikes, you've probably never used a kickstarter at least those of you younger than I am, and that's probably most of you. In the old days, it was quite a skill and you had to do it right, or you'd break your leg or it would throw you over the handlebars. The old high compression XLCH could really give you a thrill, as I well recall. It was a balance of retarded timing, the choke setting, and having plenty of body mass to throw at the kicker pedal to get the bike going and god forbid you stall at a traffic light. The SR400 doesn't have any of those problems. There's no choke to mess with so all that pre-fiddling no longer applies. There's a sight glass on the cam to aid in lining up the piston on the compression stroke. Once you get the piston lined up just after top dead center, give the kicker pedal a kick and it starts. Does it sound complicated? It really isn't. Once you do it the first time and know how the pedal feels when it's ready to start, you won't have to monkey with the sight glass again. Fuel injection solves the problem of stalling when idling, so you can look uber cool kick starting the bike without any of the old problems associated with it. Yamaha starts out with a lightweight, single down tube, double cradle frame that sets the stage for the rest of this exercise in nostalgia. A flat backbone leaves us with the old school banana seat that meets the tank hump in a gentle swale. This nearly straight top line plays right into the classic style of the 70s, and the chrome passenger grab rail completes the look. The frame sets the steering head angle at a modest 27.7 degrees, leaving us with a compact, 55.5 inch wheelbase and 4.4 inches of trail. Ground clearance is adequate at 5.1 inches high, and seat height is reasonable for most riders at 30.9 inches tall. The compact frame, though designed mainly for a certain look, provides agile handling and quick reversals far beyond what one would expect from such a mundane machine. Hydraulic, telescopic forks support the front end with 5.9 inches of travel. The forks come fixed with no adjustable parameters an acceptable feature given the lightweight and dated look of the bike and black bellow gaiters protect the swept area of the fork tubes from road grid while reinforcing the retro style. A classic, yoke style swing arm springs off the dual, external, coilover shock absorbers that also come sans adjustment, which is a little disappointing simply because the little spring preload bezel would not detract from the overall panache one bit. A single hydraulic caliper and 298mm brake disc binds the front wheel, and the factory took the retro route and installed a 150mm mechanical drum in back. Normally I would whine about that at this point, but given the lightweight, and the fact that 70% of your stopping power comes from that juice brake up front, I am okay with the retro drum brake in back. Face it, a rear disc just wouldn't look right on this ride. All around, 18-inch, tubed hoops round out the rolling chassis on laced, chrome rims a classic touch that ties right into the chrome front and rear fenders and other bits and bobs for a certain continuity of design. A 399 cubic centimeters, 
thumper engine drives this classic ride. The vertical arrangement of the air cool jug toes the nostalgic line and accentuates the look, rather than detracting from it. Though the engine strives to revive the past even going so far as to run with a kick-only starter the innards are all modern with fuel injection controlled induction and electronic ignition so you get the old looks with modern performance and emission control. Yamaha is silent on performance numbers here, but I do have some dyno results from an authoritative, if not factory, source. The engine cranks out a modest 24 ponies at 6400 rpm, and 21 pound-feet of torque at the 5500 rpm peak. Surprisingly, the torque curve actually comes on rather early, producing the majority of max torque, 20 pound-feet, at a mere 2500 rpm. This grunty bottom end should provide for some decisive hole shots and authoritative roll-on response for navigating the holes in traffic. Mileage is up there at 66 mpg, which really isn't bad for basic transportation, and if you need better mileage than that, you may have to start looking at scooters instead of the proper motorcycle sector. A 5-speed transmission keeps the power band in the usable range, and a good, old-fashioned, O-ring chain drive carries power to the rear wheel. So like the classics, you have the same look with the chain final drive, but without that black grease stripe up the left side of your back. If you ever rode an old bike without the chain guard, you know what I'm talking about. MSRP on the 2016 State Route 400 is $5,990 and comes with a one-year limited factory warranty. If you want the SR400 in black, you're in luck. Yamaha offers it in Onyx for 2016.